Hello, everyone. This is episode 25 of Here Comes the Pitch, a podcast about pitching story ideas. I'm your host, Dirk Heron. In today's episode, I will be pitching a sci-fi horror idea called Run and Hide to my guests, Birdie Birdishaw and Scum of Tempe. I would compare this story to the movies Terminator 2, Judgment Day, and The Monster. Well, without further ado, here comes the pitch. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for being on the show, guys. Yeah, you no know, problem. like I've, uh, dude, I've, uh, I've known Scum for a while now, mm-hmm. like probably, uh, I don't know. Probably like a decade because, yeah. like, we had been going to shows for so long, and then once I started up my like Misfits cover band, then like you know you were going to quite a bit of those shows and well, stuff I, like that. I was talking to your brother. He asked if I met you at PV, and I don't think I have. No, I see you there a lot, but I, don't, yeah. I, I can't remember where I met you at first. Well, you know, I was doing the bar scene mm-hmm. in, in Tempe for a while, and uh, you know, like hitting hitting the yuck yuck a tap. Like as soon as I was twenty one. Mm. And and legally able to go to bars, you know, I was there. Yeah. Uh, but like even before then, like, shoot, I was getting into bars at like seventeen because like I knew bands, and yeah. so I'd always be like the roadie, and I'd get into the the gigs, and then like you know you're supposed to leave after the band plays, or yeah. or sometimes they would even kick you out after you have set up all the, the the instruments and stuff like yeah. that. But luckily, I. I got to stay quite a bit, and then there was even times where, like, it was the after hours, and they'd be like, hey, kid, want a beer? You know? <laughs> and it's, yeah. like, thinking that, like, it's my first fucking beer or something like that, and I'm like, uh, sure, but that was not the like, case. just one? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Just one. But, um, Birdie, uh, Birdie Birdishaw, right? Yeah. Um... I met you from doing the 24-hour comic book challenge, but I actually met you before that. Yeah, we did that event at the... Uh, well, we met through... Um, Russ. What? what? Wes? Russ. 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 Yeah, we met through Russ. Um, I'm just going to move the mic a little closer All right, to you. Sorry, a little louder. Sorry. Yeah. Um, is that me? Jeez, I didn't even... All right, we got to silence our phones here. Jesus Christ. That's very unprofessional. What can I say? But no, no, we, uh, yeah, Russ Kazmierzak, which he was on the show, um, he set up a, a table for us, like at, uh, you know, in downtown Phoenix, and we were we were selling our stuff. You were selling your comics. I was selling yeah. some. I was getting drunk, stuff. really. That's a yeah. <laughs> I, well, your buddy uh, that Coop. Okay, Coop. Yeah, he yeah. he was actually at the. Uh, 24 hour comic book challenge yeah, yeah, as well he's my best friend so yeah we yeah. do that a lot yeah he, he almost seems like you know like you guys are like the Jack Black and <laughs> and Kyle yeah, we're, we're an odd couple if you put us together but yeah but no we put it like one thing too that um, you know cause at first you know like you guys have your own sense of humor and yeah. like at first, like I, <laughs> <laughs> like I was like, "What are these guys?" And like, "What are they talking about?" Because I was like right next to you guys, and yeah. we were out in like, you know, like a hundred degree weather. We were sweating our asses off trying to sell art, trying to give away art practically. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I took like a half gallon of vodka. Like I was a. Yeah, I don't know how you <clears throat> did it because it was fucking very hot out. I I was I was yeah. guzzling water. Then I hit the, the fuck. <laughs> then I hit the lesbian bar down the street. That was kind of fun. That was a. I yeah. I didn't I didn't partake in that. Yeah. But uh, but but <laughs> doing the twenty four hour challenge with you. That's when I really got to know you and and then like and hear about your passion of yeah. like creating stories and and like. I keep thinking that time I almost cried. Like that whole night was like. Keep it together, Birdie. <laughs> well, but there, you know, like that just shows you how like uh, comics mean so much to you, and like you know, trying to tell your your story through your your characters, and uh, I don't know, man. I, I like I like you definitely inspired me when well, it, when you. it comes to like how much work you've done, um, and uh, you know, just like always have an art coming out you know and that 
that was that was one thing about me is that like I took like a break for a while. Like I wasn't creating any kind of artwork for a long time, and then it was you know meeting up with other artists that are that are doing it. That like it really inspires yeah. you, and, and so I thank you for that. Well, you're welcome. Like I've been on a little break myself. I haven't done anything. It's like I'm still drawing, but I don't feel like I'm, I haven't put any books together in a while. And, but, yeah, what's up with that? I, I collect your books. It's a, they, it's, it's hey, a, yeah, you got a fan here, I know, man. It's been a yeah. rough. It's been a rough <laughs> year. It's like when your mother has cancer, you lose your job, you get a new job, job gets weird. It's a, a lot of situations going on at once. I'm trying to get, get drunk on the job. Drink all the time, yeah. yeah so. Well, I it, what the funny thing too is that like with you, scum, is like I just have so many great stories with you, and then like <laughs> you always tell like some of the greatest stories because like man, you've been around. You've like yeah. you've you've uh, especially here in Arizona, like where you you know like for a twenty six year old man, I don't know how you've done so many things in your life, but. <laughs> but I'm around 28, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but like you know, like how you you worked at Castle Boutique uh-huh. uh, for so many years, and uh, I don't know, man. Like like seeing you uh, partying with porn stars, yeah. like all the pictures. Every time I see pictures, up. I'm like, I need to hang out with this guy. Like, this, <laughs> this should be my wingman. <laughs> yeah, like how how you're telling. I me know that. where that thumb went. How you have you have like Ron Jeremy's number in your yeah. in your phone? I'm like, what? What is going on with this dude? Belladonna, if you're listening, to call me. Jeez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, but I don't know, man. Like that's 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 why I wanted you guys on the show because like yeah. Yeah, you, you know you have so many great stories, and then like Birdie, like you're telling so many great stories through your comic books and stuff like that, and so. That's what the show's all about. It's about yeah. pitching story ideas. Uh, something that, like, maybe you just in the back of your mind. Um, you know, I know, Scum, you love comic books. I love comics. And so, and that was another way we connected. Was uh-huh. that, like, you know, whenever uh, you find something, you're always, you know, bragging about it. <laughs> Which, that's, that's, that's what it's about, man. Well, it's like, you're... dude, I got this $4, and it's like, that's a $20 book. Yeah. How'd you get it? I'm like, oh, I got lucky. It's just, you know, <laughs> you got to look. That's it. So yeah. find yeah. treasure. So. And now, see, and then that's 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 what's cool because, like, you know, you, you're collecting kind of the older stuff, um, and then like I I collect a lot of like recent stuff just because, mm-hmm. like, you know, that's what comics do is they hook you in, and then like now you got to like, oh, what's what happens next? You yeah. know, and so so I, I have my box at uh, Gotham City Comics and. Uh, like recently, what was the comic that I got that like just kind of blew my mind? It's just awesome seeing Sam Keith working uh, doing the Max again. Yeah. So and and now he's like teamed up with Batman, and so that's that's interesting. And so he's writing and drawing that. So I was I, I was really happy about that. Um, but let me get into my pitch. All right. All right. So. Um, this was something that I like thought up like a couple weeks ago, actually. Um, some of my stories like date back like you know like a decade or because like it just just this this dream or this idea that like I just keep adding and adding to. Yeah. So this is this is a story that like doesn't have much that I've added to uh, other than like it has just like just a premise for the most part, and then that's why I felt like we could build upon it. Yeah. Um, So, let me just kind of like, like describe like, the first scene um, that kind of like popped in my head when I had this dream. Um, Because it comes from a dream. Was that just this, this guy, I don't know, and this seems kind of like tropey, but uh, it's also, and it might have been done in a movie already, but like, and and so in my subconscious, I'm just like, you know, it's like, oh, I'm stealing it. Scott Pilgrim, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's just about this guy comes into a gas station, um, and you know, he's just friendly with this older man that that's working this gas station. Uh, asks about like if he uh, has seen like this this. Um, younger woman with a, a younger 
child, and you know he's he he explains to him that uh, this is my wife and and my little girl, and you know um, I'm, I'm worried about them, uh, and I'm looking for them, and and then of course the guy tells him, yeah, they were in here like a couple days ago, and so he's like he's finally getting uh, close. You know, he's he's yep. he's back on the trail, and so that's what this the story is about is about you know trying to find uh, his his wife and his daughter, um, and so you know he leaves, and then the old man like hears the bell go off like you know the the, the door like no somebody came back in and then he sees the the man again the young man and then he's like oh did you forget something and then this guy like like just rushes him and then like strangles him and and like kills him like very harshly and so you're just like geez like he was just nice a minute ago and now he's like killing this guy um but then it flashes back to the outside and there's the dude pumping gas. And so it's just like, well, wait a minute. He's supposed to be in there killing this guy. So yeah. you find out that there's another person that looks like him. And you, you come to find out that this is a story about that um, his wife um, was a scientist that went over to probably like Africa or, or, or someplace in Australia um, that not many people have like surveyed and um, have been looking for new species and stuff like that and um, she brings her husband and her daughter and what they stumble upon is that there's this um, other life form that that was me that was me <laughs> That was you. That was me. <laughs> but the, 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 like, well, what I'm trying to get at is that like they're like almost like chameleons. Like they mm-hmm. they blend in with their surroundings to the point where like they're almost invisible, and so like no one has seen them for the, all this time. Uh, but it's the little girl who like noticed them um, because uh, a small, you know, child of of that race. Uh, was curious and and like befriended her, but it's it's like this it's it's a monster of course it's like this creature uh, that can you know take on the form almost kind of like the thing but like it I think of it more of as a lizard person in, in a sense and so when they find the little girl. Uh, they notice that there's like a clone of her playing with her, and that's very strange. And then uh, the the creature gets spooked, and then accidentally uh, kills the little girl in in horseplay. But so it's still the the little girl. It's still, um, it hasn't changed its shape yet. And so what ends up happening is that like this mother ends up taking this creature that looks like her daughter and has decided to, like, raise it, thinking that, like, you know, she's kind of crazy, of course, but, like, she thinks that this she maybe have has a second chance, that, like, if she, you know, it looks or like my if, daughter. I was going to say, what if she's not crazy? What if it's for a cover-up? Like, you don't want the people to know that your daughter died, so now you're raising this alien... Clonish type creature as your own to hide that fact that you're a terrible parent. That that's that's interesting. Like uh, maybe there is uh, like she's trying to cover something up, and and I almost thought like with um, when I had this dream, you know, and I'm trying to you know like because sometimes like when I have like a vivid dream like this, like I'll 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 wake up and I'll try to write it all down and then yeah. like try to make sense of it all, and so like. One of the ideas was that, like, I thought it would be interesting if, like, the father didn't know that his his daughter died. That, like, only the mother knows. So yeah. when he's, like, he's, like, trying to find her, uh, 
he's and he just thinks that his daughter's okay, but this is this is a clone. This is a creature that he's not aware of. But like he 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 knows that there's like some kind of presence that's following him that's also looking for this this uh you know his his wife and his daughter. And so and then that opening scene is them finally seeing each other where like he sees a clone of himself like you know had, who is coming out of this gas station and coming at him now <laughs> you know but like uh and then he of course like runs away and gets away but um i just thought like um cuz it, it plays with like a couple of different movies that i can think of as like of course John Carpenter is a thing, something that imitates, uh, yeah. like uh, humans. Um, they live. They live. Wasn't it that they live where they put the glasses on? Yeah, yeah. I love that movie. That's a, that's another like yeah. That's another John Carpenter movie. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I could almost see this like maybe being like an alien too. It can, it I was almost thinking happen. like a Terminator Two with like the T One Thousand. Yeah, that too. They like kill someone, takes its form, and now he's a. There we go. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Like I, I, like, I just like the idea of, like, this chameleon creature. Um, but, yeah, that's basically the T-1000. Uh, um, but, you know, I thought that, like, we could, we could kind of get into, like, where um, she's also having to heavily medicate this, this, this creature. Because she, she knows that if it, like... If it comes to, then like there's the possibility that it could kill her, or um, and so she's on the run. Plus she's like stealing medication because, of course, all of her credit cards and stuff have been like um, canceled and or frozen because of the husband like chasing after her. And so at one point she has to go to her father, who's also a scientist, um, for help. You know, and so. And then the discovery, I think that's when you kind of discover that this child isn't her child. And, uh, and then her grandfather trying to help her understand, like, if this is what has happened, then you need to, like, realize and, and make it right. But, of course, I think that you know, at some point the grandfather's got to die, or or the father, or whatever, and uh, so. But I just think that it'd be interesting, like um, maybe um, this the chameleon um, or creature alien, the mother that's like looking for her daughter uh, or you know child. Uh, has also kind of put everybody else in jeopardy, like this race that's here. And so maybe they're hunting her. Like this, It's like this constant hunting that's going on or something like that. I don't know. Like, it, like I said, this is, this, is, this is not a very well thought out uh, <laughs> idea. It was just something that like kind of popped into my mind. I like the idea that it could be kind of like a low-budget uh, horror sci-fi movie. Well, or, if you were the mother... And you just lost a, a daughter, right? The clone would be. I would take it. I mean, yeah, it feel like I mean, old. it's kind of sounds fucked up, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so and so that that's that's, like, that's what I'm trying to think of. Okay. Like that that that's the reasoning behind her, uh, her stealing this child. Yeah, yeah. You know that like it looks like my child. It talks like my child. It's not my child, but yeah. like maybe I could still raise it. Maybe yeah. I. So, like, what if the creatures on the that are chasing after the woman and the child are actually like the parents of the child, and they're trying to get their own baby back? Right. That's what I was. I was okay. Thinking. So it's like I think like it's, I think it's like a, a pack species. Yeah. Okay. That stays out in this wilderness because they they're away from people. They don't have to interact with them. They can just hunt and kill the animals they need in for nourishment, and they're you know very. I would probably say they're probably more aggressive since okay. we're talking about you know a baby creature that kills a child by you know by accident. Oh yeah, maybe maybe yeah. <clears throat> it was just so that's just they're they're very they're a little more aggressive than they realize, and that's 
Yeah, they may- stay away. Maybe yeah, like since it was you know so young, you know it, it sees this this uh, this young child and, and kind of wants to play with it, but like you know how uh, like cubs like they kind of yeah. they play with their kill. You know, and so like maybe like at first they, you know like I, you know I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you, but like I you know I might as well have. That'd some be a fun great scene. You. The 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 clone kills the daughter and like it's batting it around. Yeah, <laughs> little little blood on the lips, like, ball of yarn. <laughs> yeah, I I can totally see that. Like we're just like and then kind of like munching on it. Like that's how they find their daughter. Is like they see their daughter, or you know the mother does because I. I like the idea of, like, the father not knowing about this. But, like, the mother seeing her daughter eating her daughter. And you're just like, what yeah. the fuck is going on? <laughs> you yeah, know? See, that'd be, like, a great movie scene, too. I think you watch It's like, the hell? I mean, yeah. I don't know. I, I Like, have you... I watch a lot of movies. So I, I don't know if you guys have, uh, have seen Annihilation. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen a lot of movies lately. So. I okay. haven't seen anything new. Anything new? Okay. Yeah. Cause yeah, that that movie was like a total mind fuck. Cause it it did have kind of elements of that where it's it's like this kind of alien species, and uh, and I don't want to ruin anything, but it it has I, I can see where maybe my subconscious is kind of like feeding off of that, where I'm like uh, I'm kind of uh, mining some of the ideas from that movie, but uh, I don't know. Like, uh, what do you guys think? I know that, once again, it's not very well thought out. Mm-hmm. But, uh, like, how would you even end that? Like, where, like, would the mother die? Like, you know. I like, think the pack of clone animals bind her. Mutilator. Mutilator? Yeah. And then, like, maybe leave the father to, like. And the father goes to jail. They think he did it. Oh, interesting. Because they think he's. The guy's chasing out of they think they could think mother kidnaps daughter, runs right. away, father goes, all of a sudden both kids you know, they found the dead body of the girl, probably at his house, and they find you know then they find the dead mother. Of course. Yeah. Interesting. I got this. So the mother's <laughs> giving the daughter pills. Right. So one day the daughter's like, Why am I taking these pills? I'm not sick. Alright, so she stops taking the pills. Okay. Kills the mom. And one of the aliens takes over the mom's presence. So we have more aliens to fit in. So it's like kind of like an invasion of the body snatchers type exactly of Exactly like that, yeah. So maybe it, like maybe the aliens start to like realize like, hey, we could kind of fit into this. Like maybe this is almost like an like a, a a nice accident where they're like, huh, like we could There's so many of these to eat. <laughs> There's so many to eat, and then also, so, so we can, we can kind of blend in, you know? Yeah. Like, because already these people are kind of either on the run or you know, um, and we could just kind of. Who it would be interesting too. Like, what if, like, uh, the mother gets arrested, but it, they're actually arresting the like the alien. Yeah. And so now, like, this alien's like feeding off all the prisoners or something. <laughs> it's just like this. You know, there's just so much food there. That brings a new meaning to chow time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in prison. I don't know. I, uh, I'll have a top ramen and a slice of brain. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. Like I, I, I like I said, um, like uh, I try to think of uh, ideas that aren't like so, like uh, you know, like that could be like these like. Four hundred million dollar movies, like where you have to like build the whole CG world. Like I, like I, I, I try to think of like if if I was making a movie in the sixties or seventies, like yeah. at, with like no budget, uh, like come up with an idea, like where it's like, okay, we have got this much money, we got to film it in twelve days. What do you got? You know, and they don't yeah, even have a I, script. I, There's like so it. many movies like that made back then. You yeah, know? and now they're called classics. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know how many low budget horror movies I saw that now now they're classics like right. if I watch in fact I did watch them I watched them with my dad right. all the time you know and that was our Saturday thing it was either kung fu movies westerns uh-huh. or weird alien in, invasion movies right and now they're all classics like dude right. have you seen this yeah 
And and I think that um, a lot of like horror and sci-fi are, are kind of um, going back to that. Like they're 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 kind of like honing in on on, on that same feeling. Like uh, like a lot of recent movies that have came out, like uh, Hereditary, where that was a, you know it could have been like even it was a simple idea. Yeah. It, it, it kind of relates to a lot of movies that have already been made, but like it has like a new twist to it. Like I, I, actually, I think I have seen that one. Hereditary. Yeah, I think I have. It's also the uh, I think the use of practical effects is coming back. Yes, because everyone's hating how overused CG is. Well, yeah, because yeah, it makes like, everything look cartoony. Yeah, like it takes the scare out of it. Star Wars: Attack of the Clones. Oh my god! God, I, I thought I was watching a cartoon. Yeah, you know, and I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Yeah, it's just it, it's just too much, man. So I think well, it works perfect in Jurassic Park, right? Like someone said, some uh, you watch Jurassic Park, oh yeah, that CGI is like, oh yeah, those things are real, <laughs> you know? Right, but it, but, but it, a lot of the original Jurassic Park though was animatronics. Yeah, yeah. it was just like I think the T Rex, mm-hmm. and then like when they did like the herds, like when they like the giant yeah. stampedes of dinosaurs, like yeah, yeah, that's CG, but it's. It still looks great. Yeah, it, it was sparingly. just enough. It, it was they yeah. didn't overdo it like a lot of a lot of new movies. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so was it like Pandemic? Is that the one that's like it just looks like a it's all CG? Uh, a lot of like really bad old movies. Or not even I can't even call that old. That was like in the two thousands. <laughs> <laughs> it's not old. Wow. I was I was an old man when I watched that movie. <laughs> Well, cool, man. I think I think we can end it there. Like, uh, like I said, that the, there wasn't much thought out, but like, I I just like that the idea of like uh, just a couple ideas. Uh, um, it, it relates to a couple movies that I can like. Yeah, two thousand. The the Terminator <laughs> comparison was like perfect, like with the T one thousand, and uh, but I also think that it, it kind of reminds me of like. Uh, John Carpenter's thing of course like uh, we could have some great alien moments where like it it's like turning into a uh, human or, or turning back yeah. into the monster or creature or alien yeah. um, and uh, you know you could either do that in super CG or you could do that like try to do that practically but and then also what's great about like those older movies is that like uh, they did great cuts to where you know you could yeah. you could you didn't have to show so much. It's 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 All what you don't idea. show is what's what uh, yeah. allows you to use your imagination. And that was what was great about Jurassic Park was that yeah. like at the very beginning of that movie, you're you're not really seeing anything, but you're seeing people dying. You know, yeah. but, and it's like you just see the the glass of water. Yeah, and it's like you're terrified. You don't even have to see the T Rexes behind them. <laughs> I know, and, that, and, and that's, then you see its eye, and it's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it got real, dude. Yeah. That scene is so famous now with the water. Yeah, it's been done by a lot of you know yeah. people like yeah. parodies or whatever they call it, you know. Yeah. And it's like, dude, you know something's coming when a glass of water is shaking like that. <laughs> you know, you just like, oh, the kid's like, what the? <laughs> yeah, that like was like water a great shaking. Scene. I peed my pants. I'm yeah, out. <laughs> well. You know, you also got to remember that Spielberg created uh, Jaws, which yeah. that's another one of those movies that it's like, you, like uh, you don't see the shark very much. Yeah. But when you do, you're just like, fuck. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. You know, but uh, yeah, it's all about uh, show and tell, and sometimes it's it's better to just tell than show. You know. Oh yeah. So, well, thanks, guys. We'll we'll come back and uh, we'll have Birdie pitch us a story. All right, and uh, and uh, yeah, we'll hear his pitch. Cool. I like to hear it. <laughs> I'm 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 gonna feel bad because mine's totally different. No, no, no. That's perfect, <laughs> though. I I, I I you know like I kind of go the the horror route just because I love horror movies. Yeah. So, but or superhero stuff or or. I don't know, but let's hear uh, Birdie's pitch. Uh, Thanks for listening.